our internal rock of ages, thy hand that I have, the Lord Almighty, the beginning and the end, we we'll worship you this afternoon. We we'll reference the holy name, we adore you for whom you are. We exalt you because there is not like you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord God of heaven, for your word. Thank you for what you are proposed to do this afternoon. Thank you, Lord God, Jehovah, because we have your way in our life. Thank you, mighty Jehovah, because the blessings of today will be our portion. Jehovah, God, will lift up your name and we say thank you. Glory and honor be unto your holy name in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for everything you will do. And at the end of today, Lord God, Jehovah, we will not share your glory. We will return all the glory back unto you, Jehovah. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we have a seat, please? I want to thank the Most High God for this opportunity. I want to thank God for my Father in the Lord and Mommy for the great opportunity given unto me. Who am I to stand in front of the congregation of people, if not for the grace of God? I thank God for this great opportunity, and I pray what the Lord has laid in my heart this afternoon. The Lord will minister to every one of us as we be a blessing unto us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Today, by the grace of God, what the Lord has laid in my heart, the topic says, the most secret place in man. The most secret place in man. And what is that secret place in man? It's your heart. It's my heart. It's your heart. It's my heart. That is the most secret place in man. Why, does it, why is it a secret place? Because no one knows what is going on in your heart. Even sometimes you yourself you may not know what is going on in your heart if care is not taken. So by the grace of God this afternoon, the Lord has laid in my heart to speak on the topic which is the most secret place a man, which is your heart. What is heart? I will, I will go a little bit into um, biology. Then... Because we are made to understand what goes on physically is also going on in the spiritual realm. So I'm going to compare both ways this afternoon by the grace of God. The Lord will help me in Jesus' name. Amen. So as a, a heart, according to the definition of the heart, is a hollow muscular organ that pumps the blood through the circulatory system. What do I mean by this? Every one of us has a heart. And it's by the center of your chest towards the left side. That is where the heart is located. And this heart has a particular function to, to perform in our lives. And if any of its function is being affected, definitely we are no more. We will not be alive. That is all the more reason we need to take care of our heart. We need to take care of what is going on in your heart. I need to take care of what is going on in my heart. So the heart we are talking about this morning is the ruling center, according to the biblical definition. It says a heart is the ruling center of the whole person. It is a spring of all desires. Everything you desire comes from your heart. Before you speak out, it comes from within, which is from your heart. Before I do take any action, it comes from my heart. So the heart is very, very important in our lives. And if any, and it's, I want to say this heart has four chambers. If any of the four chambers has a problem, definitely the heart will not be able to perform its function. And the function of the heart is to pump blood throughout this, the, this, this body. If there's any defect or any problem, definitely the heart will not be able to do its job. And the same thing in spiritual realm. In spiritual realm, if care is not taken, if you're having any problem with the heart, definitely there's going to be a problem. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. The heart is the home of the personal life. Where everything is generated from. That is our heart. Let's quickly open the Bible, the Bible reading for today. First Samuel chapter 16, 7 to 11. I quickly go through. First Samuel 
chapter 16, verse 7 to 11. I read, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance, or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Verse 9. Then Jesse made a then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither had the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel. And Samuel said unto Jesse, The Lord hath not chosen this. Verse 11. And Samuel said unto Jesse, I hear all thy children. And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest. And behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for we will not sit down till he come either. Sometimes we look at the appearance of a man, but God knows the intent of that person's heart. What is the intent of your heart? What is the intent of giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ? What is the intent of coming to this church today? What is the intent of your heart as the year is running to an end? I want us to check our heart this morning. We may look at the appearance. My appearance may look very beautiful. I may be eloquent. I may know how to run up and down. But what is that, is in your, that, is, what is that thing that is in your heart? You, appearance doesn't matter. But human being can look at your appearance. Oh, you are okay. It is well with you. But within you, you know that something is not okay. I want us to check our heart this morning. And as we check any area that we need the touch of the Most High God. The Lord will touch our heart this morning in Jesus' name. I was telling us about the description of the heart the other time. That if, if the heart, if there's any occlusion to the heart, that is if the, maybe there's narrowing of the heart, the heart will not be able to, to pump the blood to the whole system of the body. It may pump to a particular side of the body, but the other part that is affected with the blood, it may die. Those are one of the things that can happen. And when something dies in one's life, it means generally, generally, everything is going to die as soon as time comes. What do I mean? One of these that can make our hearts to die is sin. When we are dabbling in sin, we are hearing the word of God that this thing is not good. You are a child of God. Please come out of it. Ask for the grace of God to help you to come out. To leave those things. But if you are still swimming in sin, that means there's an end for everything. And the end of sin is death. The same thing is applicable to the heart. When there's, when there's, the, 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 there's shortage of blood to a certain particular area of your heart, definitely that particular area will die. So I pray we will not die spiritually and physically in Jesus' name. Yeah. Then another thing I say, compare the heart is the heart, when it pumps the blood, what happens? If it pumps to a certain area and the other area has not been affected by the blood circulation, what happens? It will also die. That is the area of selfishness in woman being. When we are selfish to ourselves, everything is I, 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 I. We are not thinking of our beloved brother, of our beloved sister. We need to think of them. Many are passing through a lot of things that they are unable to tell anybody. If you don't have money, I don't have anything, but you can still pray for them on our knee. Pray for them. Go on your knee. That my, my, my sister, that my sister, God, please let your hand lay, 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 lay your hand upon her. Lay your hand upon him. Help him in that situation that he is. How many of us are doing, are doing it? It's we. I pray for myself, pray for my family. That's all. We need to check ourselves. God wants us to be our brother's keeper. And as we do so, the Lord will answer our prayers in Jesus' name. I put, another thing I put here is laziness. When we are being lazy, what happens? If the heart is being lazy and it's, on, it's not able to perform its function effectively, what will happen? There is going to be death. You say that uh, that person has got a heart attack. 
That person has got a cardiac arrest. What happened? Inefficiency of blood to the circulatory system. That is what happened there. So when the same things happen, when we are lazy in the things of God, even personally, some of us are very lazy, not to talk of spiritual things, even to do something that we find it difficult to do, talk less of the things of God. We are complaining. We are murmuring. Oh, this weather is too much. It's too this, it's too that. The weather is not this. The weather is not that. That if we have to go to our working places, we, we get up early in the morning. We will not get there late, no matter how. If, we, if, if it is snowing, we still carry our bags and we go. But when it's come to the things of God, we will not come. Even some um, of us to pray, we, we find it difficult to pray. Some of us to study the word of God, we find it difficult to study the word of God. That is laziness. And anyone that is lazy is not fit for the kingdom of God. We need to examine ourselves. In which area am I being lazy? In which area, even to, to even to people to, to even to pray and fast, like in the fast uh, prayer and fasting period, generally all over the world, redeemed Christian Church of God, that we still have some people who have not even partake in maybe one day, even half a day. There's grace for you if you can if you are not able to do the whole day, and God give you the grace. Be a partaker and receive the blessing that is in it. But many of us we are very lazy. I pray the Lord Almighty. We help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Under laziness, I, I put a proverb, chapter 6, verse 6. When we look at the hands, let's learn a lesson from the thoughts about the hands. When we learn a lesson from the hands, how they prepare during the summer, how they prepare their house, what they will eat, so that when the, when the family comes, when the, when the summer comes, they're unable to do anything, they've already had any, everything they need for the period of famine. The same thing should be applicable to us as a child of God. Do you prepare? How, how well you prepare for the things of God? Even for your own self. Let's examine and say, I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Yeah. Under that I've seen, I put the book of Romans chapter 8, verse 27. And I would like us to quickly go to the book of Jeremiah 17, verse 6. Jeremiah 17, 6. For he shall be like the for it shall be like the heat in the desert. And it's, uh, no, no, sorry about that. It's not. Let's open to Romans 8, 27. Romans 8, 27, please. And he that searched the heart knoweth what the mind of the spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints according to with the will of God. God searcheth your heart. And he make intercession for you, for, for you, for me. God pray for us, but do we pray for ourselves? Even when God is interceding on our behalf, what do we do? Sometimes we refuse because we are not attentive to the things of God. I pray the Lord will enter into our hearts and give us the grace to be able to make, to make use of our heart for his glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Then I said, another thing I put here is that stress, unnecessary burden. Some of us are carrying unnecessary body. And what ought to happen to the heart as well? When we are carrying unnecessary body, we are being stressed, we are being overworked, the heart will be overworked. Over, sometimes when there is a narrow, you try to compensate so that you'll be able to perform its function because it's been overstressed. You maybe, to, maybe it's been because, because it's been deceased or there's any abnormality in the heart, it will try to compensate. Sometimes we carry unnecessary body. As Christian, the body we're supposed to hand it over to God Almighty. We cannot be our, our we cannot carry our body by ourselves. The moment we begin to carry our body by ourselves, we are putting problem upon ourselves. What is that body you are carrying? What is that body I'm, I'm carrying? Is it am I looking for success? Are you looking for promotion? Are you looking for one thing or the other? The Lord has not answered you. There is a time for everything. At the appointed time, the Lord will answer your prayer. Hand it over to God and trust God for his ability to do what no man can do. And they will do it in Jesus' name. So stress can make us to be deceased. Stress, when it happens in our life as, as, a, as a Christian, there are a lot of problems that we exhibit. I pray, whatsoever the problem we are passing through, whatsoever that affliction is, as we lay it at the feet of the Lord Jesus today, the Lord will be our body bearer in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So as the, all the above can cause destruction to the earth. 
when the above is manifesting, we need to check our life. And what are those things that I have to make mention of? Selfishness, laziness, sin, stress, or body. We need to check our life. What is happening to me? Why is this thing happen? When we check ourselves and we examine our life and go back to God, God, here am I. Please help me. And God will arise for us in Jesus' name. Amen. Another thing is success. Let's quickly open to the book of 1 King, chapter 11, 3 to 4. 1 King 11, 3 to 4. And he had 700 wives, princesses, and 300 concubines. And his wife turned away his heart. Verse 4. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wife turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. But we all know the story of Solomon. Uh, of Solomon. Initially, he asked for wisdom. God gave it to him. He was a wise man all over the world. Everything was moving on well with him. But because of success, no what happened. He began to marry many wives, concubines, because of success. And he forgets the God of his father. Have you, have you forgot the God Almighty? That promise you made to God at the beginning of this year, that God, if you can help me, as this year is running on, if you can help me, I will do this, I will do that. Many of us, after achieving our aim, what do we do? We forget what we have promised God. Some of us, before we came to this country, we said, oh, by the grace of God, once I, once I get to UK, I will serve God. I will be devoted to God Almighty. Where is that first love today? I want you to examine your heart this afternoon. Where is that love? Do you still love that God initially? When you first of all gave your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, that eagerness there, that, oh, that's as if God should come on that particular day when we surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. Where is the eagerness today? Where are we today? I want us to examine ourselves. Many of us have gone back. Though we look admire, we look very beautiful, but where are we in the presence of God? If God begins to open our heart this afternoon, where are I? Where are you as well? Examine your heart. Is it in tune with the Lord Almighty again? Because success has acquired, has occupied everything, and there's no place for God. I pray. The Lord will return us back to his presence in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. But there is remedy. If all what I've said above is still in our life, we can still make a change. There is still opportunity for us to make a change. The moment we are still living, we still have that opportunity. And one of the opportunities today is to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and personal Savior. Are you here this afternoon? That you are yet to surrender to the Lordship of the Lord Jesus Christ. You are hearing the word day in, day out. Sin is a, is a reproach unto man. I want you to examine and come back to the presence of God. And ask God, God, here am I. Accept me today. I want to surrender my totality unto you. Come and help me. By your own power, you cannot do it. But if you allow God to come in, there will be a change in your life. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. Another remedy we can do is just is humility. We need to humble ourselves. After we have surrendered to the Lord Jesus Christ, we need to humble ourselves. Let's quickly read the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 14. 1 Samuel 18, 14. 1 Samuel 18, 14. And David behaved himself wisely in all his ways, and the Lord was with him. Why? He behaved himself wisely, and God was with him. If we ourselves, we humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord Almighty. We, are not, we, are, we don't allow what we, are, we have acquired to take us away from the presence of the Lord. Definitely, the Lord will be with us in every situation of life. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Humility is just to recognize the grace of God upon your life. That is not by your power. Whatsoever you are today, it's just by the grace of God. Not because you are better. Not because you know how to do it. There are so many people who are better than you, who are better than me. We are a day. Many are in the mortuary. Many are they are forgotten. Many are roaming up in the streets. But by the grace of God, you are here this afternoon in the presence of the Most High God. Is it by your power? 
No. Is it by my power? No. Please humble yourself and receive the mercy of God. Once you humble yourself, allow God to take over. Some of us, if you are passing any situation, we begin to think and think and think and think. Humble yourself. Go to God Almighty. You can't do it by yourself. I can't do it by myself. You have prayed, I know. You have fasted. You have done what you can do. But God has the power over everything. You don't have power over anything, over your life. You cannot do anything by yourself. Let's hand over to God. Allow God to have his way. Allow God to take over. Once you do that, you will see the mighty hand of God in your lives in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Yeah, we should be mindful of our God Almighty. You need to be mindful. Let's quickly open to the book of Psalm. Psalm 34, verse 3. Psalm 34, verse 3. Ho, oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. That should be your mind towards God. Magnify the Lord over everything. Over everything. Magnify the Lord. Give the praise unto him. Honor his holy name. No matter what, either it is good, you are yet to be there, thank God. Give him the praise. Honor him. When you are doing it, God will, be, God will do marvelous things in your life. And so shall he be in Jesus' name. Amen. We can also write down 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 1. Let's quickly open to the... We, to, we need to seek the face of God as well. We need to seek the face of God. Jeremiah 29, verse 13, please. Jeremiah 29, verse 13. Jeremiah 29, 13. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. With all your heart, seek God. And you will find God. As you seek him, the Lord will answer you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Then another, another thing I put there, the remedy. Or what to do. To overcome all what I've mentioned before. One or another thing of it is that we should make ourselves available. Available. Availability. We should be on duty at the point of service, at the moment. As I call upon, be at the point of service. Every time we go to work, I say, oh, I will have to be there. I have to be there on time. But how many times do, do we think about the church of God? How will this church move forward? If you are not there, I'm not there, who is going to be here? Let's ask ourselves that question. I know some, sometimes we are very busy. But out of, out of, out of, out of our scheduled time, let's give God the chance. Let's make a, 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 a time available for God. Because it's only those people are available that will be able to do the service. I pray the Lord will give us the grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the living God. Then I, I, I know that I, our heart is just like a well. A well. When it dries up, what happens? There will be no water there again. There is no water. You should not allow your heart to be dry. Dry of what? The word of God. The word of God must be in your heart every time, every moment. You should be there. When situation comes in your life, I'll be able to rely upon the word of God. I'll be able to stand and call the word of God. God, this is what, this is what you say concerning my life. This is what you say concerning my family. No matter what is going on now, I know you are my God. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. I know you will be there for me as I call upon you. Let the word of God be in our heart. And as we are doing so, the Lord Almighty will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. Then are you available? Are you reporting on duty as it's supposed to be? Let us make ourselves available. And another point is to repent, total repentance. Let's come back to God. Let's come back to the source of our power, the source of our joy, the source of our being, which is our Lord Jesus Christ. David, let's quickly go to the book of uh, Psalm 51. We are not going to read all. I will just read part of it. But when we get home, let's read all. What David did. David knew how to go back to God. Despite he committed sin, he did so many havocs that he went back to God and asked for the mercy of God. And God bestowed him his mercy. If he can go back to there as well, to the presence of God and ask for the mercy, the Lord will have mercy upon us in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. Let us also trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord. David faced, faced so many avocs from, uh, from Saul, from his family, from his son, from the nation, but despite, despite that, he still stands. Why? Because he trusted in the Lord. 
in quest of the law. Let's write First Samuel chapter 30, verse 8 down. In quest of the law. What that thing you are passing to? If you ask God, God, what do you want me to do? How do you want me to go about it? God asked David to, to pursue and that he will overtake. And he did. And God answered his prayer. And God restored all what the enemy has stolen away from him. I don't know what the devil has stolen from you. I don't know what the world has stolen from you. I don't know what the, your head is saying. But if you can trust in the Lord, if you can rely on God, the Lord that owns your heart, he knows that you need to perfect your heart. You need to perfect your head. You need to perfect everything that concerns you. And the Lord will answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us continue to worship the Lord. Pray. Seek the face of God. Don't be tired. Don't be weary. The Bible says don't be weary. The Lord is there for you. We answer you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let us bow down our head and continue to turn the Lord this afternoon. Here is my heart, O Lord. God, you know my heart. You see me. You know what is in my heart. Lord, please answer me today. If there's any way I've gone astray, if there's any way I have a deformity in my heart, if there's any way I've stressed myself, Jehovah, and you have come back onto the Calvary this afternoon, come and help me. Help me, oh God, I cannot help myself. I release myself unto you this afternoon. Occupy my heart. Give me the grace to know you more and more. Father, come and help me. And magnify yourself in my life. Talk to God this afternoon. Open your heart unto God. God knows the intent of your heart. This year is running to an end. Talk to God Almighty. This is my desires, O oh God. Grant me my desires, O oh God. Jehovah God, answer me by fire and glorify your holy name. Lord God, we thank you. Jehovah God, we bless your holy name because you will do what no man can do. Thank you, Jehovah. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen.